Hello guys, Charles here and welcome back to my channel. So today's video, really the point of this is to remind not only you lot but myself as well that we should always be working on chord movements. So a chord movement, simply put, is trying to ensure that there's some melody going through your chord progressions. Rather than just sliding shapes around the guitar, we want to move towards playing to the point where our lines themselves have interesting melodies going on within them. So polyphony is this concept of interweaving melodies and true polyphony is actually a pretty tough thing to do on the guitar just by the nature of its design. However, there's a few things that we can do to ensure that the chords themselves have a bit more interest than simply moving a couple of shapes around the neck. So if nothing else, I hope you'll take the time to experiment more with your chord playing and see if you can make your playing a little bit more interesting than it perhaps currently is. And that's certainly something I'm always striving to do more of, uh, but certainly not something that I do enough. So to illustrate the point, I thought today I would just break down a movement that I've come up with on a 36251. So this is in the key of B flat, and what I was aiming to do here is slightly add a bit more interest to the classic movement that we've probably all played before, which goes something like this. That sort of thing. This descending chromatic approach. I'm sure you've all played something similar to that. Now it doesn't always end a song, it's not always a turnaround, you get these movements in the middle of like There Will Never Be Another You, Don Lee for example, um, plenty others I can't think of the top of my head, but this descending chromatic motion. And it's great, it's a lovely little movement, but it gets a bit samey, so I was just experimenting with this a little bit yesterday, and I came up with a movement that I quite like. So one of the things that I've talked a lot about on this channel is ensuring that you always follow a melody. So to come up with interesting harmony, the way I think it has to be done is you come up with an interesting melody over the top first, or at least a interesting enough melody. It has to be simple, of course, if we're going to be able to harmonise it as chords, but a bit of motion uh, and a bit of voice leading. And then we work backwards and harmonize from there. So the little melody I came up with over this 36251, very simple, nothing special, but sounds like this. Really simple little melody there. So to harmonize this, we've got to now work downwards from those melody notes, keeping the function of the harmony intact. So my first chord here, is a D minor 7, but my melody note was an E. Well that's allowed, we can have a D minor 9, so I'm just going to keep a nice simple voicing here. The fewer voices you use, the easier it is to keep track of your voice leading. Of course if you've got 25 note chords, then trying to keep track of 25 individual voices is pretty tough. Um, but keeping to a 3 note chord, we can generally keep track of it. So we've got this D minor 9 voicing here. Now, my next chord would be this descending chromatic option would give me a C sharp minor seven, if I was taking that approach. So on this C sharp minor seven, uh, my melody note is fret 10 there, which is an F or an E sharp. So I'm gonna make this a dominant chord. Now, because it's just a chromatic interjection, I can change the tonality of the chord, no trouble. So. I could do this descending original idea with minor seven chords or with dominant chords. Or it doesn't matter because it's the function that's important the, important, the movement. So here's my D minor nine to C sharp seven or D flat seven. Next up, I've got my melody note on the top here of an F sharp and some sort of C minor idea. That F sharp, I can think of it as a G flat and have a half diminished chord, minor seven flat five, which I quite liked. But then seeing as I'd already used this minor nine before, I thought, oh, well, I'll add the minor nine to this. And that's a lovely chord, or at least I think it is. So, so far we've got this movement. which I think is really, really lovely. Then B melody note, I've got to harmonize. 
over a sort of F7 sound. Well, I've got an F7 structure here. B on the top. That's kind of a sharp 11 idea. F7 with a B gives us an F7 sharp 11. And I thought, gonna spice it up a little bit, make it altered. So I'm gonna add the G flat in there as well. Now conveniently, that ends up being the shape I've just played down a string set. So I'm literally keeping that same shape, just moving down a string set. Gives me that lovely voicing. It ends up being like a B chord, a B triad on the top, over an F which is the family of four relation, which we've talked about a lot on this channel. So here we are. Down to this note here. Now that kind of sounds like the root, but it's not. It's the sixth of our B flat chord. We have to play a B flat chord now because it's our one. So that's gonna be our sixth degree, which if we add in the seven, it's gonna make it a 13 chord. So we've now got a B flat 13. Remember the only difference between a 9, 11, 13 and a 2, 4 and 6 is the presence of a 7th degree. And there's our full little progression. Now in terms of actually physically playing this stuff on the guitar, the two top tips which I would give you is when you're practicing chord movements, this is something which I wish I had been doing more of, is practice them quietly and gently because when you actually are a rhythm player, you are less likely to be the important player. You want to be in the background. So get used to making these sound beautiful at less of a volume than your hard playing. Most things sound pretty cool when, you, when we give them a good thwack and strum them, but make sure that you can play these gently as well and you get used to playing gently when you're a rhythm player. I don't know how loud that's recording into Logic, but I'm playing really gently there. Um, very often when these things get compressed, it sticks out quite a bit, but I'm trying to play it as smoothly, legato, and quietly piano as possible. And the other thing I'm aiming for is to play all my notes simultaneously. It's an easy habit to get into to roll your chords. I've probably been doing it throughout this video, in fact, without even thinking about it, arpeggiating my chords, but get used to practicing them with immediacy as well. If we're trying to deliver a melody through our chords, a bit of voice leading, then really it helps if all of the notes happen together. So I hope you found some useful ideas in there, guys. Now, I've talked about plenty of chord progressions before, and we've covered these ideas, but it's something that I always find putting off in my own playing. It's really easy to get distracted by the exciting stuff, the space age arpeggios, you know what I'm like. I love my licks and fills and all these showy offy things. However, it's really important that we take the time to make sure our rhythm playing is as exciting as possible. When we're practicing at home, we spend a lot of our time doing the, the, the the fun, shreddy stuff. But of course, when we're actually out there playing in real life, it's really the tables are turned. You spend most of your time doing rhythm work and the occasional solo here and there. So make sure that you really do give it the time it deserves. Now, that doesn't mean you need to spend all your time doing rhythm work and none of your time doing lead work because the two do complement one another. But I think I get frustrated than myself anyway when I just find myself reverting back to these same old chord shapes. And it's nice to at least, you know, now if I come across a 36251, which I inevitably will, I've at least got another option here. And of course, I'm constantly working on other ideas as well. So both of us, let's try and work on this a little bit more this week. Please do leave me a comment down below. Let me know what you're working on at the minute and if there's anything you'd like to see discussed on this channel. Please do give this video a like, subscribe, ding that notification bell and share with any of your friends who might find this useful. And as always, I hope you're all doing very well, getting plenty of practice in, and I very much look forward to seeing you in the next one. Cheers. Roll up, roll up, let me embed a story you'll never forget. A drip, drip, you're drowning in debt now. You can't buy your way out. And I had to find it difficult to cope